the realm of possibility until the last couple steps when it was clear that it just wasn't going to happen today. Um, I think that Brooke and I had the same um, plan from our coaches as far as where to move and when, and I really was, the only thing I was considering in this race was to be in the point position or the front spot going out that second to last turn coming into the side. And so on the back stretch, when I'm like, all right, this is when I go around everyone, I went outside. She was already in a great position inside, and we were battling for that spot until it just kind of became a decision of first and second right then and there. Um, and I thought maybe I could still put one more final punch in in the last little bit of the race to still pull it out, but I had one weird step. I don't know if I hit a little something on the street or whatever and was like, whoop, lost all that momentum and it was over. But, you know, this is really early season at this point and she ran a really well executed race and we're just going to look forward to the rest of the season at this point. Usually yep. you've won, you know, you win most of the road miles you're in town, but this one... Yeah, it just right spoiled me. One. You know, the... The first couple years, um, or especially last year, like I, I underestimated the winner. Um, she definitely just made a very bold move with a full lap to go, and I sort of, the former 800 meter runner in me, assumed I could just come back. Um, so I think that there's there's always been just a little thing here and there that I haven't quite committed to like I need to. So um, yeah, it's really just those choices in execution in your race that makes such a big difference on a loop course like this in comparison to something where you have a long time to consider how you're going to kick and wear and feel who's around you. So. Yeah, well, I guess it would make it easier if you guys were all swing wide to get positions this time. So, yeah. You know, it's easier when you're in straight yeah, yeah, for sure. And just with the wind, and I think everyone kind of heard from the men as they're coming off, they're like, oh, that wind was brutal. And so we're all talking about it before the race even starts. Like, oh, guys, did you hear it's windy? Not that we don't feel it ourselves. But I think that it leaves everyone open for a possibility when the race goes that slow. Um, so, yeah, I tried to make a move with a full lap to go um, just to make sure that we're stringing it out a little bit, um, but just didn't make make it bold enough on the backside. How is your body feeling like in terms of sharpness, getting ready for such a long outdoor season? Yeah, I was, <laughs> I don't know, percentage wise, I don't know where I would put myself for sharpness at this point. I think I definitely am very confident in my strength, um, but this is the first time that I've run outside in such little amount of clothing. Um, in Minnesota, I've been, this Monday I did a track workout in 30 degrees and windy like this and everything, so I'm definitely still finding that um, sharpness and speed and everything that you require for that. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to some warmer weather in Minnesota and a few more races to get into that position where you're really feeling ready to rock. When's the next race? Um, the Grand Blue Mile in a couple, well, a week and a half or so in Des Moines. And then Drake Relays as well? Yes, I'll do the Drake 1500. Okay, awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.